Hi, I'm Brian from HeadFi.org, and this is the 2022 CanJam Singapore Preview. CanJam Singapore takes place April 2nd and 3rd, 2022, at the Pan Pacific Hotel in Marina Square. The Singapore HeadFi community is our most densely packed group of enthusiasts anywhere in the world, which is why there's always so much energy surrounding CanJam Singapore. It's been an age since we were last able to see you all, and we cannot be more excited to return this year. Of course, CanJam Singapore would not be possible without this year's show sponsors, so I want to extend a special thank you to Buyer Dynamic, DCS, and Effect Audio. CanJam Singapore is going to be packed to the gill with brands and exhibitors this year, so let's get right to it and show you just a small sample of the gear you'll be able to hear and see at CanJam Singapore 2022. Ibasso is going to be at CanJam Singapore at the Zeppelin & Co. exhibit, and they're going to have the upcoming and so far very mysterious flagship portable digital audio player, the Ibasso DX320, making what I believe is its very first public appearance. While we do know there will be significant developments with the Ibasso DX320, we know almost nothing else yet. Now, last month, Paul from Ibasso announced the DX320 on HeadFi with very few details provided. Ibasso is playing this one very close to the chest, but here's what little we do know. The Ibasso DX320 will have dual ROM DAC chips, specifically two of the ROM BD3431 EKV DACs. Dual batteries will power the digital and analog section separately to optimize PSRR or power supply rejection ratio, and it will offer interchangeable amps using the same amps as the DX300. Quite literally, this is all we know about the DX320 so far. But again, the mysterious upcoming iBasso DX320 portable digital audio player will be at the Zeppelin & Co. exhibit, and a new flagship player from iBasso is something you can't miss. The iBasso DX320 will be one of the first things I'll be checking out at the show. Buyer Dynamic is one of the stalwarts of the HeadFi community, and for good reason. They've been around for what seems like forever, and they've been creating amazing headphones all along the way. My first experience with Buyer Dynamic was way back in the early days of my youth, listening to a pair of headphones owned by my uncle. I believe it was a pair of classic Buyer Dynamic DT220s. During my college days, all of the audio labs in my school had Buyer Dynamic DT770 Pros on hand for monitoring and recording. I've even owned a few buyers myself over the years. Now, Buyer Dynamic has returned to continue their trend of creating highly regarded headphones with two new models. I'd like to introduce you to the Buyer Dynamic DT700 Pro X and the DT900 Pro X. Both of these new releases feature Buyer Dynamic's Stellar 45 Dynamic Driver. The Stellar 45 is built around Buyer Dynamic's new three layer diaphragm, which consists of an internal dampening layer surrounded by two high grade peak or polyether ether ketone polymer layers. The driver's coil is a new, lightweight copper clad wire coil with an overhang coil design, which allows Buyer Dynamic to include more coil for the same mass. Buyer Dynamic says that when paired with the Stellar 45's high grade neodymium magnets, the diaphragm can be pushed much farther than with conventional voice coils for higher SPL levels with lower distortion. The styling of these new models will feel immediately familiar to many head fires, paying homage to several models that came before, like the DT770 Pro, DT990 Pro, and more recently the DT1770 and 1990 Pros. You'll find a headband with a spring steel bracket construction design, memory foam padding, and plush velour ear pads. Like some of Buyer Dynamics' more recent models, the cables are detachable thanks to a 3-pin mini XLR connection, and two lengths of cable are included in the box, one 1.8 meter and one 3 meter. Both of these new headphones have a nominal impedance of 48 ohms. Both Pro X models arrived right as we were wrapping up recording for this preview, so I haven't had extensive time with either yet, but early impressions have me thinking these will end up finding their way into many homes. The closed back DT700 Pro X comes across as neutral with a breath of extra warmth and bass impact, and a soundstage that's larger than I expected to find. So far, it's played well with a variety of my favorite genres, including ska, metal, and pop. The 700 is one of those headphones that I think will end up pulling double shifts as both a work and play headphone. Now its sibling, the Openback DT900 Pro X, will likely feel right at home for those of you looking for a more conventional monitoring signature. Resolving, controlled, and linear were my first thoughts. The 900 came across as highly revealing, which you'd expect from a headphone like this, and it did highlight some of the flaws in some of my less than stellar recordings. For listening enjoyment, my collection of jazz and orchestral tracks were the standouts. My time with the DT700 Pro X and DT900 Pro X may have been short so far, but I'm looking forward to getting to know them better in the coming weeks. Get your first taste of both at Buyer Dynamics Exhibit. Meza Audio will be at CanJam Singapore and you'll be able to find them at the AV1 Exhibit. 
Now, I know I say this a lot, but it's only because it's so true. Meza Audio has the best built, most finely crafted headphones I've ever held or looked at, especially with their flagship over ears, the Meza Audio Empyrean and the Elite. But before we get to their over ears, especially a recently launched Meza flagship closed back over ear headphone, I want to first talk about this. This is the latest in ear from Meza Audio that'll be making its debut at Canjam Singapore. This is the new Meza Audio Advar. According to Meza Audio, for the archaic civilizations of Romania, an Advar was similar to a talisman or amulet, believed to be all powerful, a symbol meant to bring blessings to those who wear it. Well, I've been wearing this Advar for a couple of days now, and it has brought blessings indeed in the form of a beautiful sound signature. Now, inside of its handsome shell, the Advar has a precisely tuned 10.2 mm single dynamic driver, with Meza Audio aiming for a warm dynamic presentation, a smooth velvet like sound. Now, I'd agree with their characterization of the Advar sound, but would add that it also has some sparkle and air up top that might be part of the reason it sounds very airy, with a roomy soundstage for an IEM. The Meza Audio Advar's earpieces are made of solid stainless steel produced by metal injection molding with CNC finishing and a gorgeous high gloss black chrome plating on the main shell. The Advar comes with an MMCX silver plated cable terminated in a 3.5mm plug. Meza will also offer upgrade cables sold separately terminated in 2.5mm balanced and 4.4mm pentacon balanced. Anyway, make sure not to miss the outstanding Meza Audio Advar IEM at the AV1 exhibit. Now let's get back to those Meza Audio over ears with a focus on their recently launched new flagship closed back over ear, the Meza Audio Lyric. The Meza Lyric uses the planar magnetic driver design they pioneered with Renaro Isodynamics for their open back flagships, but optimized and adapted for use in a more compact closed back design. That it's still a full circumoral design but more compact is important, as closed back designs open up more use cases including on the go use. One couldn't reasonably carry the Empyrean or the Elite everywhere. The Lyric is much more compact, but it's still very comfortable. As far as the Lyric sound goes, Meza Audio gave it a tuning that's a bit of a departure from their flagship open back headphones with rich refined bass and with more low end emphasis than with their open backs while leaving the mid range free of bloat or excess. The Lyric's full low end reminds me of some of my other favorite high end dynamic close backs, yet its free breathing mids and sometimes brighter treble combined with that low end potency sometimes reminds me of one of my favorite electrostatic headphones. The Lyric has become a regular companion for me and I have no issues driving it with my favorite portable players. I should also mention the Lyric is as meticulously crafted as beautifully built as its flagship open back siblings. Anyway, the Meza Audio Lyric is also a must-hear headphone at CanJam, again at the AV1 exhibit. And don't forget to also listen to their flagship open back, Meza Audio Elite, which was one of the biggest hits at CanJam SoCal last year. For CanJam Singapore this year, there will be five seminar sessions happening on Saturday, April 2nd, and none of them are repeated. Also, seating is limited, so plan your schedule accordingly so that you don't miss the seminars you want to see. The seminars will take place in the Ocean 6 room on the second level, right above the Pacific Ballroom. On Saturday from noon to 1 p.m., Rob Watts of Cord Electronics will be giving a special presentation on the new Cord Electronics Mojo 2. Seven years after the debut of its predecessor, Cord's long-awaited Mojo 2 portable DAC amp is finally here. Join Rob for a fascinating recounting of its development over the years and a comprehensive overview of the Mojo 2's groundbreaking features. From 1 p.m. to 2 p.m., Zeppelin & Co. will be presenting a talk titled Best Foot Forward. In a world of infinite choice, how do you build and budget for your dream headphone setup? Whether you're just starting out in the hobby or a seasoned expert, this talk will have something for everyone. From 2 p.m. to 3 p.m., Zeppelin & Co. will be hosting their second seminar, Transducer Battles. Prepare for debate, because this one might just stoke some flames. With flagship IEMs pushing the innovation envelope, are they now the king of the personal audio hill? Join in the discussion during the Transducer Battle Seminar in the Ocean 6 Room. Our third seminar, hosted by Zeppelin & Co., entitled Realistic Retail, will take place from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. Join Zeppelin & Co. as they explore the shifting front lines of our hobby, taking a deep dive into how the virtual space interacts and coexists with physical retail. And finally, from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m., Zeppelin & Co. is presenting a discussion called Test Tube. How does tube amplification stand the test of time against upcoming solid-state designs competing for the same space? Join us at 4 p.m. for the test tube seminar and find out. Again, each of these seminars takes place on Saturday, April 2nd in the Ocean 6 room, directly above the Pacific Ballroom. 
DCS will be at CanJam Singapore, and they're also one of the CanJam Singapore sponsors, so thank you for supporting the show, DCS. Now at CanJam, DCS will have their DCS Bar Talk DAC and headphone amplifier at their exhibit in the Ocean 8 room above the Pacific Ballroom with a quieter listening environment. The DCS Bar Talk has been one of the digital reference DAC amps here at HeadFi HQ and is now the DAC reference for HeadFi and CanJam staffer Ethan, who goes by Third Eye on the forums. Now, veteran audiophiles among you are probably very familiar with DCS, or at the very least know that DCS has been making top-notch audio gear for decades. DCS is perhaps most known for their proprietary ring DAC technology. Now, as a very young audiophile many years ago, after reading about DCS's ring DAC technology and all the positive reviews, and after listening to their gear at shows, I dreamed of owning DCS gear. Now, I could not afford DCS then, so I bought an RCAM CD player that used an IC version of DCS's technology. While it wasn't fully-fledged DCS, I was thrilled to own even a taste of it. The DCS Bartok is a full DCS ring DAC through and through, and it can be had with a custom-designed DCS headphone amplifier built in with very low output impedance and up to 1.4 watts of output into 33 ohms and 150 milliwatts into 300 ohms. It also has switchable crossfeed, which means a lot to me, as I use crossfeed when needed, which is somewhat regularly. The Bartok's Ring DAC is not based on a standard DAC chip, but is instead a fully bespoke digital signal processing engine designed by and unique to DCS, an entirely tailor-made solution running code written and regularly refined by DCS's engineers, all of whom impressed me a great deal when we visited DCS's headquarters in the UK a couple of years ago. Now, one of the claims DCS makes about their ring deck architecture is superior linearity. So I did a linearity measurement of the Bartok on our Audio Precision APX555 analyzer, and as you can see, the Bartok was essentially perfectly linear all the way down to the very lowest level of my test at minus 120 dBFS. Now, using AP's JTest jitter measurement utility, the Bartok turned in one of the lowest jitter measurements I've seen on that test so far. Again, at CanJam Singapore, DCS will have a quieter listening environment in their Ocean 8 exhibit room so that you can better experience the superb DCS Bartok. I think it's fantastic that DCS is bringing their decades of know-how to the world of HeadFi. When one thinks of luxurious portable audio accessories, one brand that's sure to come to mind is Effect Audio. And while their lineup includes a varied selection of cables, adapters, accessories, and even IEMs, there are a few select items that they'll be featuring at CanGem Singapore 2022, beginning with a new Chiron IAM cable. Part of Effect Audio's Hall of Fame series, the Chiron combines the gold-plated silver conductors from their Hall of Fame Horus cable with the gold-plated gold and silver alloy conductors from their flagship Centurion cable and their versatile connect system that allows you to use a Chiron with nearly any IAM termination you might require all in a single functional and durable package. Now, I don't have nor have I tried the Chiron just yet, but I do have a Leonidas 2 cable from their Heritage series, which I found to be stunning in both build and sound quality. Based on that, I can only imagine how well the Chiron might perform, that is, until I get a chance to try it out with the rest of you just days from now. Effect Audio's new Axiom and Axiom XP IMs will also be available for audition at CanJam Singapore. Both are hybrid models, featuring a single 12mm dynamic driver paired with dual balance armature drivers from Knowles in a two-way configuration. But whereas the Axiom sports a magnesium dynamic driver, the Axiom XP features a pure beryllium dynamic driver in its stead. And finally, Effect Audio will be unveiling their all-new signature series, beginning with the first cable in that series. Unfortunately, I can't reveal any details about it just yet, not even its name, but you can be amongst the first in the world to audition it at CanJam Singapore 2022. One of the most exhilarating experiences we come across in personal audio is when gear invites us to fall more deeply in love with our favorite songs. When the tracks we know inside and out enrapture us like one of Homer's sirens. When time passes by in a blink while we're entranced by the music. At CanJam Singapore this year, you'll have the chance to experience an in-ear that I quite honestly didn't expect would suit my taste in music, and yet it proved me wrong so many times. I was completely taken by surprise by this, the Visioneers EXT. The name EXT stands for Elysium Extended, but I wouldn't call the EXT a successor to the Elysium. Visioneer says they started with the warm and embracing yet electrifyingly detailed sound of the Elysium and wanted to give it more, 
everywhere they could. More low-end rumble, more mid-range detail, more air to the high end. To my ears, Visioneers delivered on all fronts. It may be at the edge and frequently slightly beyond my preferences when it comes to base impact and presence, but the layered details contained within deliver a wonderfully engaging experience and kept enticing me back. Audiophile base heads should feel right at home here. The high end is beautifully clear, detailed, and resolving, though it may be a touch unforgiving with certain tracks. And vocals? The siren's call is potent and shines through with both male and female vocalists. All of this is presented within a large, spacious soundstage. I can only describe the experience as musical, and isn't that precisely what many of us are seeking? The EXT is a hybrid IEM, with one 9.2mm dynamic driver for the low end, one 6mm dynamic driver for the mid range, and four electrostatic drivers for the highs. It has one of the best looking machined faceplates I've seen in recent years, a gorgeous X shaped pattern with recessed vacuum metallized aluminum mesh to ventilate the dynamic drivers housed within. And this stunning X pattern and exclusive purple finish are also found on the included carrying case. It's a treat to multiple senses. The EXT is incredible, and it's bound to be one of the rare IEMs where Jude and I both agree. However, I've been hogging the EXT since it arrived, and he'll likely have to wait until CanJam Singapore to try it for himself. The EXT won't be the only IEM worth auditioning at the Visioneers exhibit. Of course, they'll have their fabulous Elysium, with its more natural, mildly mid-forward sound. They'll also have the spiritual successor to their Erlkenig, the Visioneers Phoenix. The Phoenix features 13 balanced armature drivers per side in a 5-way crossover configuration. Its presentation is more in line with what I traditionally go for in an IEM, with a faster, less impactful low end, smooth and detailed mid-range, and an upper register that's clear, open, and airy. If you enjoyed the Visioneers Erlkenig, or if you've never had the chance, then make sure the Visioneers Phoenix is on your list at CanJam Singapore. ZMF Headphones is one of only a handful of manufacturers that craft artisanal audiophile headphones where science and art meet to create a truly distinctive listening and ownership experience. Through a myriad of custom editions, a core of models that both extend and exemplify ZMF's house sound, and an ever-evolving lineup, ZMF continues to surprise us as they just did less than a week ago when they announced this, the Atrium. Making its worldwide show debut at Tanjam Singapore 2022, the Atrium is ZMF's new co-flagship. It's also the first of a new generation of ZMF headphones that employs their patent-pending Atrium damping system for improved resonance control, which, in the case of the Atrium, resulted in improved staging and finer control of its overall frequency response. As for sound quality, I don't want to spoil your future audition right here and now, so I'll simply say that the Atrium is a superb combination of open and natural staging, vivid imaging, rich and impactful bass, engaging mids, with an addictive analog sounding warmth throughout. I've been listening to the Atrium for well over two weeks now, and I can tell you that not all of that listening time was spent by choice. Over and over again, I found myself thoroughly enchanted with the Atrium's gorgeous presentation, unwilling to take it off. If that is the kind of listening experience you've been searching for, I highly suggest that you bring your very best critical listening tracks, as well as your most embarrassing guilty pleasure tracks, to Zeppelin's ZMF exhibit. You might just find it as intoxicating as I have, just be sure to mind the line growing behind you. Make sure to stop by AV1's exhibit at CanJam Singapore to listen to the latest from Astell & Kern. Astell & Kern really defined the high-end portable digital audio player market as we know it, and they still make some of the best engineered, best made portable daps on the market, including one of the two or three players I carry with me almost everywhere I go. This is the Astell & Kern SP2000T, and it is one of the most versatile portable players I've ever used, and one that more completely fulfills my hi-fi desires, perhaps beyond what any portable player before it has been able to do. Because as I've said many times before, I'm an unapologetic tube audio enthusiast. You see, the Astell & Kern SP2000T has a unique trick, something Astell & Kern calls the triple amp system. The triple amp system has three different modes of operation, tube amp mode, op amp mode, and hybrid amp mode. The tube amp mode uses the Korg new tube, which has an anode grid filament structure, and according to Korg, operates exactly as a triode vacuum tube for the characteristic rich overtones you'd expect when you hear the words triode vacuum tube. Now, I happen to love this mode, and I use it often. 
By the way, to help minimize noise in the tube amp mode, the SP2000T uses very cool mechanical isolation mechanisms. Now, one of the coolest parts of that includes a structure that uses magnets to float the amp to minimize noise when it's exposed to mechanical impact or vibrations. It's a very cool solution. Now getting back to the amp modes, in op amp mode, you can expect the clarity and resolution associated with flagship class Astral and Kern players, the sound that has made Astral and Kern players so popular with enthusiasts. And in hybrid amp mode, you can actually adjust the balance between the tube amp mode and op amp mode. It's very easy to do with screen controls, and the switching between all modes happens instantly, allowing you to compare the sound from mode to mode very easily. Not surprisingly, with me, you can usually find this SP2000T all in on tube amp mode or in hybrid mode with the balance favoring tube amp over op amp. As for output level, the SP2000T can output 3 volts RMS from unbalanced and 6 volts RMS from balanced. As for the SP2000T's DAC section, it's a quad DAC design using 4 ESS ES9068AS DACs. There are other nice developments that come with the SP2000T, including a 5-inch Full HD, that's 1920x1080, high pixel density display, dual band Wi-Fi, and other key new features and improvements, including some software updates that minimize the need to sideload apps, which is a very big deal for Astell and Kern enthusiasts. And, as expected from Astell and Kern, the SP2000T has a gorgeous chassis design. And in what's a big deal to enthusiasts of fine leather goods like me, the SP2000T comes with a vegetable tanned leather case using leather from the Italian tannery Badalassi Carlo, which I think is insanely cool. Badalassi leather is some of the most coveted leather, and this case should develop a beautiful patina. Of course, at the AV1 exhibit, you can expect to see the full Astell & Kern lineup in addition to the SP2000T, including the much-discussed new Astell & Kern Acro CA1000 that combines the functions and portability of a high-performance amplifier and DAP in an entirely unique form factor. Incredible Gear has a habit of sneaking up on us at CanJams, and one of the headphones likely to do just that at CanJam Singapore is this, the Dan Clark Audio Stealth. The Stealth is one of those rare closed yet open sounding headphones with a smooth, natural signature that I think will resonate with many head fires. There's a sense of air and spaciousness that helps me forget I'm listening to a closed headphone, which is wonderful for evenings when I'm looking for the isolation offered by a closed headphone while preserving the experience of one that's more open. So how does the Stealth pull this off? We sat down with DCA's founder, lead engineer, and designer Dan Clark last fall, and Dan went in depth into everything that makes the Stealth special. One of the technologies that Dan and his team developed in pursuit of their goal is what they're calling the Acoustic Metamaterial Tuning System, or AMTS. The AMTS is a small inline device that sits between the transducer and your ear, and it helps Dan and his team shape the headphone's frequency response at specific frequencies. For something that looks so simple, it's deceptively complex, so I highly recommend checking out our interview with Dan to see more about how it works. The Stealth won't be the only headphone worth checking out from Dan Clark Audio. Because at this year's CanJam Singapore, you'll be able to audition a headphone that Dan says aligns with a popular Harman Target response almost exactly, the Dan Clark Audio Aeon 2 Noir. The Aeon 2 Noir features all of the technologies found in the original Aeon 2, like DCA's V Planner Driver and TrueFlow V2 Airflow System, but its signature has been retuned to add gentle bass and treble boosts to the sound. DCA says these changes bring the measured response right up against the preference curve originally published by Dr. Sean Olive and his team. If you're curious to try out a headphone that matches the Harman preference curve, then make sure the Aeon 2 Noir is on your list. Dan Clark Audio's headphones will be on display at AV1's exhibit this year, so stop by to experience the Stealth, Aeon 2 Noir, and so much more. We come to CanJams to experience new and exciting gear, and KN is prepared to deliver on those expectations in a big way. This year's CanJam Singapore will mark the world debut of KN's HA300 Mark II amplifier. Like the original HA300, the HA300 Mark II is a Class A single-ended triode amp. Unlike the original, the Mark II comes with a balanced 4.4mm output and a digitally controlled analog volume control, which KN says is more precise with sensitive headphones. According to KN, the new control ensures the highest signal-to-noise ratio and perfect channel balance even at minute volumes. The Mark II can push up to 6 watts into your favorite headphones, and its Class A power can even be redirected to the rear speaker terminals to drive high impedance, high sensitivity speakers. Headfires looking to experience a powerful reference headphone and speaker ramp in their desktop rig should have the KN HA300 Mark II near the top of their audition list. Now, if you're looking for something more portable, look no further than KN's N8 II digital audio player. 
The N8 II takes the two portion of its name quite literally, with a dual DAC architecture, dual voltage output modes, and KN's dual timbre features. So whether you're looking for tube or solid state sound, and class A or AB bias, you'll find it here in the N8 II. The NA2 supports PCM up to 32768 and DSD up to 512 from its single-ended 3.5mm and balanced 4.4mm outputs, as well as its balanced 3.5mm line-out. With USB input and output, SPDIF, Bluetooth 5.0 with LDAC, AAC, UAT, and SBC, a Snapdragon 660 CPU, 6GB of RAM, and an Android 9 operating system, the NA2 is clearly an exciting new option in the world of portable players. Be sure to stop by Zeppelin & Co's exhibit to experience KN's HA300 Mark II desktop amplifier and the N82 digital audio player. Focal and Name Audio will be at CanJam Singapore, and Focal's exhibit is always a mandatory stop for serious headphone audiophiles. But now I'm going to take a different tack here and tell you a Focal-related story. Bear with me, you'll understand why by the time I'm done. I hope. Back in 2019, for the AES, the Audio Engineering Society Headphone Conference in San Francisco, Gross, the popular maker of measurement microphones and headphone measurement fixtures, Gross was introducing a new extended frequency range coupler. This coupler, which is now available, is calibrated all the way out to 100 kHz, but with a stated tolerance to 50 kHz. Anyway, one of the co-owners of Gross at that time asked for my help to measure with this new coupler to find headphones that would make for a good demonstration at the conference of this coupler's extended frequency range. We did a bunch of measurements, and one headphone definitely stood out, the Focal Utopia. This is what the Focal Utopia looks like measured on that Gross coupler with the extended frequency range. Nothing else in the bunch of headphones we measured for Gross came close to the Utopia in terms of energy above 20 kHz. Here's the Sennheiser HD800 by comparison, which was more in line with what we were seeing with other high-end headphones way up in those frequencies. What's my point? I'm not sure really, but Focal does talk about higher breakup frequencies with their solid beryllium drivers. Can we hear out to there? No, but it's really cool to see that measured this way. Anyway, I thought you might find that interesting. The engineering that goes into Focal's headphones is insane. Now, one of my favorite closed-back headphones of all time, in terms of tonal balance and my preferences, is the Focal Stelia. For my tastes, the Stelia is one of the best-sounding closed-back headphones currently available, and certainly one of the best closed-backs ever released. The Focal Stelia's tonal balance is rich, punchy, and a lot of the Stelia's measured response tracks rather close to the Harman target. The Stelia also images very coherently with solid image object placement. It's not the widest imaging closed back, but I tend to prioritize tonal balance over soundstage. I also love the Stelia's detail retrieval, and like the Utopia I showed that extended frequency measurement of earlier, the Stelia uses Focal's solid beryllium drivers, but with a motor structure optimized for a closed back design. It is a fantastically resolving closed back headphone to my ears. Anyway, at CanJam Singapore, the Focal Utopia, which is maybe the most resolving electrodynamic headphone ever made, and its closed-back sibling, Focal Stelia, are engineering marvels and should definitely be given a listen at CanJam Singapore. Make sure to also listen to Focal's full lineup, as they have so many good headphones now. In-Ear is returning to Singapore this year and bringing with them their entire lineup of in-Ear monitors, including several old fan favorites and a new take on my personal favorite in-Ear model, the Profile 8. The Profile 8 features a four-way, eight-balanced armature driver design, with two switches to adjust the Profile 8's default signature. The first switch boosts the low end by 3 dB, and the second boosts frequencies above 8 kHz by 2 dB. With both switches down, the Profile 8 has what Inear describes as a studio reference tuning, and with both switches up, it shows off its more playful audiophile fun side. While I occasionally like my music with a bit more impact and sparkle up top, I more often than not go with the default Profile 8 sound. In our CanJam New York preview last month, we introduced you to the in ear Profile 8 Custom. The Profile 8 Custom delivers the same sound and build quality that we've come to associate with the Universal Profile 8 in a personalized body that offers improved comfort and seal compared to its Universal sibling. The Profile 8 Custom sports the same matte black finish and comes with your choice of three different faceplates. One solid matte black, one matte black with a laser engraved in ear logo, and one with the in ear logo inlaid with real gold, handmade by in ears in-house goldsmith. Ennear sent their premium gold faceplate for us to photograph, and it quickly claimed the top spot as my favorite of the three options. The Profile 8 isn't the only thing to experience when you visit Ennear's exhibit. At CanJam New York, I spent some time with two of Ennear's other IEMs and came away wondering why I haven't spent more with either. 
The first was the in-ear Stage Diver 5, a 5 driver per side IEM with a balanced yet non-neutral sound and a mildly emphasized low end, and the ProMission X, a 10 driver per side in-ear that delivers a warm, full-bodied sound with ample low end presence and detailed airy highs. When you finish listening to the Profile 8 or while waiting for your chance, be sure to give both the Stage Diver 5 and the ProMission X a listen. If you're unable to join us at CanJam Singapore this year, be sure to check out Enier's new website, recently updated for the English-speaking market so it's easier than ever to learn about the Enier family online. If you are joining us at the show, then you'll be excited to hear that Enier will also be giving away a laser engraved Profile 8 Custom to one lucky headfire at the event. Don't forget to enter when you visit their exhibit, because you won't want to miss this opportunity to take home my favorite IEM in the Enier collection. Elotech will have their full lineup of premium accessories at CanJam Singapore 2022. But in addition to that, they'll also have two fantastic surprises for us. The first surprise is, well, I'm not actually allowed to tell you what it's called just yet. So let's just call it Project L for the moment, or at least until it's finalized. And in fact, Elotech needs your help to determine what Project L's ultimate fate will be. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to audition three different flagship level prototype cables known to us only as Alpha, Beta, and Gamma. Once you've completed that phase and provided your feedback, you'll be entered to win a Socrates table from Elotech's School of Athens series. I wish I could tell you more about Project L, particularly some of its unique qualities, but Elotech's labs have classified that information for now, so you'll just have to find out for yourself at Tianjin Singapore. And the second surprise is this, Dante's Inferno, Elotech's very first table for full-size headphones. Part of their new Dante series, the Inferno features a dual-core design employing two differently sized strands of high-purity copper and two layers of shielding for superior EMF noise rejection. And unlike some of the more delicate cables I've come across over the years, the Inferno is built quite tough, durable enough to go to hell and back. It's available in every termination commonly used today, both at the source end and the headphone end, and its standard length is a very optimal 1.5 meters, though custom lengths are available upon request. As for presentation, I found the Inferno to be very well balanced with a natural tonality being neither dark nor bright. Transparency was excellent, offering me exceptional detail retrieval, especially in the vocal range. Overall, it fared well against several other cables that I use regularly, including Y-Wires, Nordos Heimdall 2, and my personal favorite, Kimber's Axios Topper. So if you have a stock cable that needs replacing, or you simply want to upgrade to a higher quality cable, be sure to stop by Elotech's exhibit to check out Dante's Inferno for yourself. A few years back, Stax introduced the successor to their iconic SR009 electrostatic headphones, the SR009S. At CanJam Singapore this year, you'll have your first chance to audition the successor to the successor, the all-new Stax SRX9000. The Stax SRX9000 features an all-new diaphragm constructed from an ultra-thin engineering plastic film with a surface area 20% larger than the diaphragm used in the SR009S. Despite the larger size, Stax says this new diaphragm has a lower mass than those found in Stax's previous flagships. Stax says these changes all come together to realize the widest sound field ever. Now, this next detail is something that many head fires have been requesting for years, and Stax has finally answered our pleas. For the first time ever in a Stax headphone, the cables are user replaceable. The X9000 features the first modular Stax cable system, and you'll find both a 1.5 meter and 2.5 meter cable included in the box. Of course, the X9000 is still compatible with Stax Pro Bias amplifiers, so there's no need to update your entire rig to take advantage of the new cable system. Stax will also be showing their 80th anniversary line, including the SRL300 Limited, the SRM353 Black Limited, and the SR009 Black Limited. CanJam Singapore may be your last chance to experience the 80th anniversary models for yourself, so be sure to stop by Project Perfection's exhibit to try Stax's anniversary line, the SRX9000, and the rest of Stax's lineup. One of the new products that'll be at CanJam Singapore 2022 that I've been most excited about is this little gem right here. This is the new Cord Electronics Mojo 2, and it's the successor to the immensely popular Cord Mojo that was released seven years ago, back in 2015. 
I can't believe seven years have already gone by. Heck, I can't believe three years have gone by since the last CanJam Singapore. Anyway, what Cord has packed into the Mojo 2, the improvements and features versus the first generation Mojo, constitutes a significantly long list of stuff, and some of these new features and improvements are for me, and probably will be for a lot of you too, very significant, very important. Let's start with some of the overall improvements with the Mojo 2. There have been many improvements with the Mojo 2's DAC. There are 40,960 taps now, 40 DSP cores, and a 104-bit custom DSP core, among many other improvements. They've also eliminated coupling capacitors, which they say contributed to greater neutrality with the Mojo 2, and that's one of the first things I noticed about the Mojo 2, is that it sounds more neutral and more resolving than the first generation Mojo, which I found to be comparatively smoother and lusher, and not as resolving as this new one. Something else Cord Electronics added with the Mojo 2 is something I am very excited about, and that's a super useful digital EQ or tone control thanks to the new DSP. With this EQ, there are four bands of adjustment. Lower bass, centered at 20 Hz, mid bass with a 125 Hz shelf, lower treble with a 3 kHz shelf, and high treble centered at 20 kHz. For each of the four bands, adjustments can be made in 1 dB steps up and down for a total of 18 dB of adjustment range per band. It's actually very quick and easy to use, too, once you get used to it, and as someone who often uses EQ, this is a very big deal to me. The Mojo 2 also adds three different types of crossfeed, and I am also a crossfeed fan and have been for many years, so the addition of crossfeed is also a big deal for me. The Hugo series has always had crossfeed, and now so does the Mojo 2. Thankfully, with my most sensitive IEMs, the Mojo 2 has been dead quiet in terms of self-noise. But it also has good drive for the form factor, outputting 90 milliwatts into 300 ohms, 5.2 volts RMS, and 600 milliwatts into 30 ohms, 4.2 volts RMS. And the Mojo 2 is compatible with the Cord Poly Streamer server if you want to take it wireless. There are so many improvements with the new Mojo 2 versus the first generation one, so it's best if you audition it for yourself at CanJam Singapore. Of course, Cord will also have the rest of their lineup there, and their desktop DACs are still my absolute reference DACs and have been for years. Odyssey will be joining us again this year, and there will likely be a noticeable buzz surrounding their exhibit. While their lineup of IEMs, including Odyssey's LCD i4 and Euclid, will no doubt be popular with portable lovers, I highly recommend starting with their latest full-size offerings. This is Odyssey's first ever electrostatic headphone, the Odyssey Carbon. The Carbon was originally developed for use in MRI applications, and the story of how it came to be is absolutely worth hearing. So, if you haven't already seen our interview with Odyssey CEO Shankarthi Agasamadram, be sure to check that out. Without question, the Odyssey Carbon is a powerhouse of resolution and detail. The Carbon is quick and decisive, and to my ears, it ranks among the world's best electrostatic headphones. Odyssey has done a spectacular job capturing the magic of electrostatics, and the fact that they achieved this with a system developed for MRI machines is nothing short of impressive. The Carbon has made waves at every CanJam since its announcement, and you can find out why at Odyssey's exhibit. It's a headphone that must be heard to be believed. The other headphone you won't want to miss at Odyssey's exhibit is the latest addition to their LCD family, the Odyssey LCD 5. The LCD 5 is the first all-new flagship LCD over-ear design to come from Odyssey in five years, and boy was it worth the wait. Without question, it's one of the most electrostatic-sounding non-electrostatic headphones we've ever heard here at HeadFi HQ. So close, in fact, that there's no doubt that the LCD 5 and Carbon are siblings. Compared to its Planar Magnetic Co. flagship, the Odyssey LCD 4, the LCD 5 takes a more neutral approach, coming across as a bit brighter, a bit more revealing. This shift from the LCD4 sound brings the LCD5 more in line with my preferences, while Jude says that there have been times where he's preferred the LCD4 tonality. So, if you're looking for a flagship class planer with a bit more speed, transparency, and resolution, you absolutely must give the LCD5 a listen at Odyssey's exhibit. If you haven't yet heard, the iFi Audio Zen lineup is growing, and at CanJam Singapore, you'll be able to audition not one, but two of iFi Audio's newest desktop components. Say hello to the iFi Audio Zen Air series. The first new addition is the iFi Audio Zen Air DAC. The Zen Air DAC is a compact desktop DAC amp combo that offers an impressive list of features for the asking price. On the rear, you'll find stereo RCA outputs alongside a standard USB-B input with support for PCM up to 32384, native DSD and DXD, and MQA decoding. On the front, you'll find an analog, not digital volume control, buttons to toggle iFi Audio's proprietary X bass and power match, and a 6.3mm single-ended headphone jack that delivers up to 280 milliwatts at 32 ohms. 
Now, if you're looking to stream wirelessly from a phone, tablet, or any other Bluetooth device, then the new iFi Audio Zen Air Blue makes a compelling offer. The Zen Air Blue supports all major wireless codecs, including SBC, AAC, Aptex HD, LDAC, and LHDC, among others. iFi Audio also says that future codecs can be added via firmware updates. The Zen Air Blue features separate analog and digital stages rather than an integrated system on a chip or SOC solution. So, if you're looking to go wireless with your desktop rig, be sure that the Zen Air Blue is one of your stops at CanJam Singapore. The Zen Air series was just announced earlier this month, and we haven't had the chance to try them here at HeadFi HQ, so join me in getting our first listen to the Zen Air DAC and Blue at iFi Audio's exhibit. You know, I had a whole thing planned where I was going to recap Noble Audio's storied history, covering the artistry of Dr. John Moulton, aka The Wizard, maybe even touching upon some of their greatest hits for context. But no, I'm not going to do that, because we don't have that kind of time. Because at CanJam Singapore 2022, Noble Audio is launching not one, or two, or even three, but five new models. Five. Beginning with a new Falcon ANC. If you love your Falcon or Falcon Pro, but have often wished for active noise cancellation to make it a perfect companion, then your wish has just come true. I haven't heard the Falcon ANC yet. So I can't give you any insight as to its sonic qualities, but let's be honest here. As its name suggests, the Falcon ANC is more about what we won't hear at Noble's exhibit at CanJam Singapore 2022. The second new model is this, the Jade. Featuring four balanced armature drivers bolstered by a single double magnet dynamic driver, the Jade provides us with a neutral warm signature that is remarkably free of harshness, thus reducing listening fatigue from extended listening sessions. In addition, the Jade offers plenty of low-end weight and gravitas, lending bass and contrabass instruments both power and richness. I can easily see how the Jade would be an ideal monitor for certain musicians, particularly drummers and bassists. Meanwhile, back in the control room of the studio, engineers might prefer Noble's third new model, the Cadence. Employing a custom array of eight balanced armature drivers sourced from both Knowles and Sonian, the Cadence offers us a very linear and neutral bright signature quite akin to that of studio monitors. And like studio monitors, the cadence is remarkably revealing, calling forth an abundance of detail through the entire frequency range, with a particular emphasis on vocals. Just one quick caveat here, I found the cadence to be extremely sensitive, such that it actually found the noise floor of my Aslan current SP-1000, which is something that very few IEMs have ever done. So be sure to bring your very best source when you audition a cadence for yourself. Next up, in a surprising break from multi-driver goodness, we have Noble's new D12, a single dynamic model that wound up being one of my favorites from their new offerings. The D12 is quite possibly the very best W-signatured IAM I've heard to date. Its richly detailed mid-range is eclipsed only by its thunderous sub-bass and refined top end, all of which made it thoroughly satisfying and enjoyable with a wide range of genres. The D12 also surprised me by presenting me with much of what I liked about the cons mid-range and staging at only a quarter of the cons price. Speaking of the con, we now arrive at its issue, its progeny, and easily its superior in every single way, Noble's new Kublai-Con. Featuring a four-way driver architecture comprised of a bone-conducting tactile transducer, a 10mm dynamic driver, four Knowles balance armature drivers, and a piezoelectric super tweeter, the Kublai-Con presents us with seismic sub-bass, powerful but clean bass response, absolutely gorgeous mids, clear and refined upper mids, and delicate airy highs. On top of its superbly tuned frequency response, I was astounded by its effortless detail retrieval, exceptionally expansive staging, and exquisitely vivid imaging. The Kublai-Con is, simply, one of the best IEMs I've heard in recent years. If you audition nothing else at Noble's exhibit, be sure to make the Kublai-Con the one you do listen to at CanJam Singapore 2022. Abyss Headphones has recently released their newest headphone, the Diana TC, and you'll be able to hear the Diana TC at AV1's exhibit at CanJam Singapore. For me, the new Abyss Diana TC is the best overall headphone Abyss has yet made. The new Diana TC has benefited from the low-mass diaphragm technology brought over from the AB1266 Phi TC, which is a lower-mass diaphragm than in any previous Diana models. Abyss lowered the mass of both the diaphragm base material and the conductive traces. 
The Diana TC does carry over the Diana magnet assembly, but Abyss Headphones has better optimized the conductive trace pattern to the magnetic field, increasing the surface area that's driven. Another change Abyss has made with the Diana TC versus previous Dianas was to increase the open area on the machined sides to optimize acoustic impedance for the driver at any volume, which also happens to make the Diana TC more open back than previous models. One of the most obvious changes was to the ear pad design. Abyss brought the ear pad manufacturing in house, giving them greater quality and control, and so improved ear pad consistency. And these Diana TC ear pads are a completely new design. They're made of a new soft foam internal structure with a pillow top to better adapt to the shape of your head. The new lambskin covering has a very soft, pliant feel, and it's now unperforated. These ear pads give the Diana TC the fit of a more conventional headphone versus previous models. With these new ear pads, I find getting a dependable seal over my ears easier and more consistent. With these updates, I find the Diana TC as very much a peer of its larger flagship AB1266 Phi TC sibling. I actually prefer it to the AB1266 Phi TC. The Diana TC is extremely resolving, almost ruthlessly so, and I mean that in the very best way possible. The bass is taut, fast, and extended a refinement of any Diana's before it, and among my favorite bass presentations of the non-bass emphasized flagship headphones on the market, it's very linear down low. The mid-range and treble are also more polished, the Diana TC just overall being more together, more coherent than maybe any Abyss headphone before it. Without a doubt, the Abyss Diana TC is one of my strongest recommendations to audition at CanJam Singapore. Again, the Diana TC and the rest of the Abyss lineup will be available to listen to at AV1's exhibit at CanJam. If you're coming to CanJam in search of an IEM with a low end that's north of neutral, clear mids, and a smooth detailed treble, then I have great news for you. The Audio will be joining us at CanJam Singapore this year, and they're bringing with them their latest flagship, the Monarch Mark II. Like the original Monarch, the Monarch Mark II is a tribrid design IEM with nine drivers per side, one dynamic driver, six balanced armature drivers, and two of Sonian's electrostatic tweeters. While this arrangement may sound familiar to owners of the original Monarch, there are several unseen changes that have taken place inside. The audio swapped the original 10mm driver for a brand new composite diaphragm design, incorporated the latest electrostatic drivers, and reconfigured the balanced armature drivers. These changes enabled the audio to improve upon the original Monarch's performance with a more balanced tuning that they describe as balanced perfection. Now while I don't have first-hand experience with the original Monarch, I've been getting to know the Mark II and appreciate its relaxing, easy listening experience. The low end is forward yet well controlled, mids are clear and textured, and the treble is tuned for an effortless yet detailed treble response. The Monarch Mark II delivers a smooth, easy listening experience for hours of fatigue-free listening. Its braided two-pin cable is configurable with three swappable terminations, 2.5mm balanced, 3.5mm unbalanced, and 4.4mm balanced. The Monarch Mark II won't be the only thing worth checking out at the audio's exhibit. While you're there, be sure to audition the Theaudio V16 Divinity. The V16 Divinity features a 5-way crossover system with 16 balanced armature drivers per side from both Knowles and Sonian, and Theaudio calls the V16 their summit of technical innovation. After what I've heard from the Monarch Mark II, I'm curious to see what the V16 Divinity has in store. Be sure to check out both of these in-ears at Theaudio's exhibit. This is a headphone measurement amplifier that THX generously built for HeadFi's measurement lab. It's based on THX's popular AAA technology, AAA standing for achromatic audio amplifier. And as far as I know, there's only one exactly like this one in the world. But at CanJam Singapore, at the Zeppelin & Co exhibit, you'll be able to listen to an amp that's a lot like this one with Benchmark's outstanding HPA4. The Benchmark HPA4 is easily our favorite of the AAA amps that we've so far used. Based on the flagship THX AAA 888 design and with one of the most advanced volume controls ever developed, the Benchmark HPA4 can be used as a balanced headphone amp and preamp. Now from its unbalanced headphone output, it has a noise level at typical volume levels of around 1.9 microvolts, which is lower than even the very best measuring high-end portable digital audio players. So the HPA4 will have a dead silent noise floor with even the most sensitive IEMs. And while the HPA4 can do the microscopic output into super sensitive IEMs, it can also drive up to 6 watts into a 16 ohm load and deliver gobs of voltage into 300 ohms, so virtually any over-ear headphone is well within its envelope too. 
Now, given its advanced volume control with a wonderful display that makes it super easy to set the HPA4 to unity gain for our measurement setup, the HPA4 is often used in our measurement lab right alongside the THX custom amp. And by the way, while you're visiting Zeppelin & Co's exhibit, make sure to also check out the rest of Benchmark's gear, including the outstanding Benchmark DAC3 HGC DAC, which with the HPA4 is one of the reference systems here at HeadFi HQ. Fittier is a name that may be unfamiliar to members in the HeadFi community, primarily because they're often incredibly difficult to find outside of Japan. However, those of you attending CanJam Singapore this year will have a chance to audition some of Fittier's elusive models at Jabin's exhibit in the second floor Ocean 7 room. The Fittier Fittier is just one of Fittier's unique gems. The Fittier Fittier's construction is solid, and when I say that, I almost mean it literally. Fittier is the only brand I know that completely fills the shell with acrylic when building an IEM. The result is a rigid housing, one that can handily deal with the bumps and bangs of everyday life. The Fittier Fittier is perhaps the most solidly built universal IEM I've ever handled. Buying a Fittier can be an investment for many buyers, and it's reassuring to see so much attention go into the construction and materials, ensuring the headphones will stand the test of time. Sonically, the Fittier Fittier is an IEM that will appeal to many. It has a speedy low end with a mid-bass hump that doesn't go overboard, a neutral mid-range, and a smooth, almost relaxed top end. Many of the recordings in my library are mastered to emphasize the vocalists, and those tracks are often a perfect match for the Fittier Fittier. Now, if you're interested in seeing what Fittier can do with just a single balanced armature driver, then give the Fittier J111 a listen. The 111 delivers a light, open, airy sound in a compact, lightweight package. I've had my J111 for some time now, and I always find joy in its linear, revealing presentation. I do want to note that the fit can be slightly tricky on the 111, so I recommend experimenting with different tips to get the best seal for you. I've paired mine with Asla's Sedna EarFit Light short tips. Since you'll have a rare chance to demo Fittier's lineup of IEMs at CanJam Singapore, be sure to stop by Jabin's private listening room, Ocean 7 on the second floor directly above the Pacific Ballroom, and experience one of the industry's best kept secrets for yourself. Big things can come in small packages, and when space is scarce, we head fires look to get the largest sound in a compact footprint. Like many of us, I have limited desk space at home, but even though space is at a premium, I'm not willing to skimp on features and sound quality. Thankfully, one of the companies that rises to the compact challenge will be exhibiting with Sam Audio at CanJam Singapore. This is the SMSL SH9 desktop headphone amplifier, and it's been a main component in my home rig for quite some time. The SH9 is based on THX's flagship THX AAA888 headphone amplifier, which is the quietest measuring amp we've ever measured here at HeadFi HQ. So quiet, in fact, that it requires the world's quietest analyzer, the Audio Precision APX555, to get accurate measurements. The SH9 can deliver up to 6 watts into 16 ohms and 3 watts into 32 ohms. It has balanced and single-ended headphone outputs on the front, as well as balanced XLR and single-ended RCA outputs on the rear. On the front is a 1.9 inch LCD display and a volume knob that doubles as a function control. With a footprint of only 187.5 millimeters by 154 millimeters, it's small enough that I don't worry about desk space. The SH9 drives my two main full-size headphones, the Audio-Technica ATH ADX5000 and the Sennheiser HD800 beautifully. And even though it's capable of driving my less sensitive full-size headphones, it's quiet enough for even my most sensitive IEMs. It's one hell of an amp, even before you factor in its asking price of just under 400 Singapore dollars. Do not miss the SMSL SH9 at Sam Audio's exhibit. Of course, the desk-friendly bang-for-the-buck trend doesn't stop there. Feeding my SH9 is SMSL's SU9 desktop DAC. The SU9 is an MQA-compatible DAC based around the ESS ES9038 Pro DAC chip. It supports up to 32768 PCM and DSD-512. Digital input is handled via USB-B, optical, coax, or Bluetooth, and the SH9 supports SBC, AAC, Aptex, Aptex HD, and LDAC wireless codecs. It shares the same footprint, LCD display, and function knob as the SH9, so stacking is a breeze. And with it coming in under 600 Singapore dollars, the stack is easier on the wallet than several similarly sized desktop systems. Be sure to stop by Sam Audio's exhibit and try some of your favorite headphones with one of my favorite desktop stacks, the SMSL9 and SH9. While it's not brand new in an absolute sense, Head Audio's headphone might as well be considered a recent release since relatively few people in the community have significant experience with it. Employing the world's first full range AMT or air motion transformer driver, the headphone's pleated diaphragms purportedly move air up to four times faster than conventional pistonic drivers. 
That translates into an astounding sense of speed, effortless retrieval of even the most minute details, and flight ship level transparency. All while maintaining a neutral frequency response that is reminiscent of Head's renowned studio monitor speakers. And for a multi genre detail head like me, that's music to my ears. Having said that, the headphone's most compelling feature might just be one that has nothing to do with sound quality at all. It's price point. In defiance of current flagship trends, the headphone retails for only half the price of its competition, which is particularly remarkable when we consider that each and every headphone is handmade in Germany. So if you've never given the headphone a thorough audition for yourself, then stop by Zeppelin's exhibit to do just that. Regardless of whether it's to your liking or not, you'll be glad that you had a chance to hear just what it's capable of. One of the brands that's become synonymous with the HeadFi community is Final, and Final is poised to surprise us once again with their new true wireless IEM, the Final ZE3000. With the ZE3000, Final set out to create an audiophile-friendly true wireless IEM that's both comfortable in the ear and easy on the wallet. At CanJam New York last month, I sat down briefly to give the ZE3000 a demo, and I came away impressed by what Final has managed. The ZE3000 features what Final is calling their F-Core for wireless driver, a 6mm dynamic with an adhesiveless injection molded diaphragm for lighter weight and more even weight distribution. The diaphragm is paired with a lightweight copper clad aluminum wire coil for a faster response. Final says the end result of these new technologies is lower distortion and a smooth and balanced sound signature. To my ears, it delivered a clear balanced sound that will likely resonate with headfires who gravitate towards more reference tunings. The ZE3000 supports AAC, SBC, Aptex, and Aptex Adaptive Codecs and up to 2448 PCM music files. It comes with a variation of their wildly popular E-Type ear tips designed specifically for true wireless in-ears, and the ZE3000 is IPX4 certified. You'll get up to 7 hours of uninterrupted listening on a single charge, and with the included charging case, the maximum runtime comes in around 35 hours. What I appreciated most about the ZE3000 is that it didn't try to be more than it is. With it, you can listen to music and take the occasional phone call thanks to its built-in microphones. And that's about it. There's no iOS or Android mobile apps, no noise cancellation, no fitness tracking. It's simply a great pair-and-play listening experience. Unfortunately, my listening time in New York was brief, so I'm looking forward to hearing the ZE3000 once again at Project Perfection's exhibit. Sony is back and in a big way. Earlier this month, Sony announced the successors to their incredibly popular NWWM1A and NWWM1Z Signature Series digital audio players, and Sony will be showing both of these new dApps publicly for the first time at CanJam Singapore. Say hello to the NWWM1A M2 and NWWM1Z M2. Compared to the previous generation, the M2 updates feature a new 5-inch TFT color display with 1280 x 720 resolution, which is a considerable step up from the low resolution 4-inch displays found in the original models. Gone is Sony's proprietary W import, replaced by a more universal and on-the-go friendly USB-C connection for charging and data. You'll also find 2.4 and 5 GHz Wi-Fi connectivity. Both players run on Android 11, which means listeners can take advantage of third-party music apps with full support for offline playback. And last but not least, these second-generation players have an increased runtime of up to 40 hours compared to the previous maximum of 30 hours, with a charge time that's been considerably shortened, now requiring only 4.5 hours for a full charge. We've been using the previous generation NWWM1Z as one of our go-to players here at HeadFi HQ, and it's made for an excellent match with Sony Signature Series headphones like the over-ear MDR-Z1R and the in-ear IER-Z1R, both of which will be available to demo at Sony's exhibit, and I expect that the new NWWM1AM2 and the NWWM1Z M2 players will continue that tradition. Try them all for yourself at the show. Just before we wrapped up shooting, we received some very last minute updates of products that would be at the show that we thought you'd want to check out. First, at the Project Perfection exhibit, you'll be able to hear the new MSB Technology Premier Headphone Amplifier. For those of you not familiar with MSB, they're most known for their ultra high-end DACs, with their higher-end models being so pricey, they make most other very expensive audio gear seem affordable by comparison. But you can see in the photos part of the reason why. MSB designs and builds everything they make to fantastic extremes. The MSB Premier Headphone Amplifier is a Class A design with a zero negative feedback, high voltage, current mode circuit that is load independent. According to MSB, the amp automatically adjusts the load that it's driving without affecting its stability or sound quality. 
MSB also says the Premier headphone amp drives pretty much everything, including mega-ohm headphones, and can also drive into only a fraction of an ohm if needed. MSB also claims dynamic range from this amp of 134 dBA. And look at that chassis, by the way. MSB claims this unibody chassis has 12,000 square inches or 7.75 square meters of heatsink area. Wow. Now at CanJam, we also just found out that at the SAM Audio exhibit, they'll be showing the just announced Yulong Aurora DAC amp. The Yulong Dart Aurora is a compact MQA-ready all-in-one DAC pre-headphone amp combo that will make its debut at CanJam Singapore. The Yulong Aurora is designed around the latest ESS ES9068AS 32-bit DAC chipset with XMOS XU216, supporting 768 kHz PCM, DSD512, and 8X MQA decoding capability. The Aurora has a plethora of input and output options, including Yulong's MAS, or Mobile Audio Source, which allows the USB input to work with iOS and Android mobile devices in addition to regular Windows, Mac, and Linux computers. The Yulong Aurora's amp section is a fully balanced, discrete Class A circuit that delivers up to 4,000 milliwatts per channel into 32 ohms. Anyway, I'm glad we found out about the MSB Premier headphone amp and Yulong Dart Aurora just in time to sneak them into this video. Well, that's a lot of gear and still just a fraction of everything that will be at CanJam. Again, CanJam Singapore is happening April 2nd and 3rd, 2022 at the Pan Pacific Hotel in Marina Square. Of course, we didn't have time to cover every exhibitor in this preview, so scrolling on your screen now is a list of all the companies and brands who will be exhibiting at CanJam Singapore this year. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in Singapore and on the forums at headfi.org.